guys rambling man moto here i'm leaving my uh, dealer after uh, doing the service and uh, one thing they do after every service usually i ask them not to do this anymore but i wanted them to do it this time around was adjust my clutch so then i have to learn where the friction zone is all over again as i'm leaving I want to show you like I had mindset where pretty much it would start biting right about there whereas this you know about right there and I have to kind of get used to it and then I uh, mentioned on the ride up I tend to make notes about what I want them to check and uh, they wrote on my ga replace gas cap with original gas cap and I said well this is the original gas cap like what's actually wrong with it this was when I asked about the uh, fuel injector leaking and they said it wasn't leaking but they could smell gas from the gas cap I asked them well is that covered under warranty and then they were like, yeah, I guess we could try to get it covered under warranty. So they're going to look into that. And then I had mentioned I've been feeling a random rubbing. Sound like from the front. And he wrote on there and talked to me about it that my front wheel speed sensor looks like it's been worn down. Now... I admit, I don't know much about that sensor. I get what it's for. I don't know why it's being rubbed. Um, then I said, well, shouldn't that be covered under warranty as well? He's like, yeah, we could probably look into getting that covered under warranty. So I'm glad I asked because they didn't volunteer. And uh, I guess they said they'll look into it and get back to me. I mentioned I had replaced the battery and uh, they told me that I'd already done it I should get in touch with Indian so on these slow speed maneuvers with this clutch I've got to kind of learn this this new clutch is throwing me off a little bit I mean they adjusted it to spec which it should be but it does throw me off in having to learn it so I'm curious what you guys, uh, your Indian owners, especially the Springfields, what are you paying for your 5K service? Um, so the person checking me out here is a new person that I hadn't worked with before. She was nice enough to volunteer that they had a $50 off Indian coupon that she would apply, which is great. I had actually looked on my phone and couldn't find one. And this is the topic I got into such a debate with them the last time I was about. The last time I was here. But then after the coupon, she told me it was like $370. And I was like, wow, this is a $400 plus dollar service for the 5K service? Which I'll... It's not fair, but a lot of people look at it as nothing more than an oil change. But they do a lot more than an oil change. So, yeah. Um, I asked to take a look at the receipt before I agreed to it, which I guess people don't do. One of the things I noted was they said two hours of labor. And I, I should have remembered this from the other services. I knew it wasn't two hours because at the hour and about 40 minute mark, I noted the car was ready. <laughs> the bike was ready. Oh, we're just waiting on the paperwork, which took like another 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm like, well, that wasn't two hours of labor. And a guy standing there says to me that it's a misconception that they're actually going to spend two hours, that if the flat rate for the service is two hours and they get it done early, he pointed his thumb back toward the, the service area and said that's how they make extra money. Like, <laughs> okay, interesting way to go ahead and word that. Um, I should probably have remembered that because that's come up I think before. 
the oil change kits on these things are not cheap. Anyhow, I, I really, believe it or not, try to not to nickel and dime them. But given my previous experiences with this place, I just, I don't know, it just, you know, I watch the nickels and dimes like everybody. And if you, now if she hadn't worded it as, okay, that was two hours of labor it took, that's what caught my ear. Like, well, actually, no, it didn't. But then for the other guy to say that they make a profit in the back by doing it quicker. Okay. I'm sure you guys will comment on that. Sometimes I get comments that show, don't show up here about, what am I, an idiot? Of course, that's how they work. If I charge you for two hours of labor, but it only takes me an hour and a half, of course, that's better for me. I'm just saying that. I think the guy's explanation that it's a flat rate is a good one. It's just that I have a pretty good feeling that if for some reason it took two and a half hours, something tells me their flat rate wouldn't stop at two hours. So it's not a two-way benefit. If it takes less time, that's what it was. No benefit. If it's going to take longer, suddenly I bet there's no benefit to the flat rate. For the service anyhow i wish they would have volunteered that they would look into the warranty as well now i gotta make a return trip i have for the heck of it i think i am going to reach out to uh indian about the battery see if i can get compensated the battery i put in it is probably better than anything uh indian was going to put back in it he did tell me, and I know many of you will agree with this. By the way, I made notes, and he wrote handwritten notes on all the uh, feedback, which I appreciate. When I made the note about I've replaced the battery, he said it's not good for these things to be connected that long to a battery charger, and that the starter should be charging the battery. Now, I know in the comments, one of you have made that comment. So... I no longer have this one on the battery tender. I haven't been plugging it in because I've been riding it so often. But on my Super Chief Limited that sits for weeks at a time, I have kept that on the battery tender. I'm going to Google this, but I'll say it here too. Is Why is that a bad thing? If, if today's technology supposedly says it stops charging when it hits the max, help me understand, is it because it's it's not letting it dip at all is it better to unplug it and then plug it back in a week later when you might forget also i forgot to put on my darn list to ask them about the scratch that uh, came up when we were working on the uh, seat that's right in the vicinity of the luggage rack but i remembered it right as i was about to leave and I asked them kind of, I didn't ask them, I should have asked them if they do it there, but you guys will probably think that's something I should be able to handle, but I asked them what the little paint uh, piece cost. And initially she said, I think $30. And I said, well, the one I saw had, it looked like clear coat on one end and you flip it over and it's like the paint on the other. And she said, that's a kit. It's $59.99 or $60. So I did not order the paint uh, pen from them today. I actually have free shipping. I'm an Indian member on their website. So I'll uh, probably order that on their website if I'm going to get around to doing it. If you guys can't tell, I'm a little off with the clutch here. I wanted them to return it to spec because I think I overdid it on my adjustment. And I wanted to see if it might help me uh, if it had to go further out. Mine was a little jumpy, but I liked that it gripped quicker. But it was almost too quick. I liked the... Um, the customer service staff they had there was very friendly. Uh, I did uh, get to speak to the uh, mechanic who worked on the bike. Very friendly. Um, 
and I'm always grateful, you know, for the guys that work on the bikes, man. You hope they're good because, you know, it's not, it's a lot riding on it, right? On this gas cap, if they replace the whole, he said he might not be able to get it for the whole gas cap, but to get the seal, which is fine with me. I don't know what the seal costs, but it's one of these things like with Indian, you never know. When you pull it up, it could be a $50 part. Um, but maybe he thought this wasn't seal factory because I got the decorative cap on it. But that was just a little thing glued on the top. This one I wish I had not bought. It's a little too dark. Can't really read it. That was brand new. I might swap it with the one from my other bike. I like the way these look. I think they turned out okay. Hey guys, Ramblin' Man here. Uh, doing a few things. Kind of wanted to give a full wrap up to the uh, 5K visit. You know, I've had the Indian Scout and the Indian Super Chief both go through a 5K visit with a dealer. Uh, pretty uneventful. Um, this is the first time where I came out of it with some questions and things. And uh, I've shared some videos leading up to this service where I had mentioned I'll, I'll have the dealer check some things out at the 5K service. And one of the challenges is they've gone through uh, each time. I think I've had a different mechanic and a change in staff almost every time. And I know as uh, riders, a lot of times we're always curious what other people are paying for these services and stuff. So I've got the receipt right over, right behind, and I shared a little bit in the video. So yeah, it was a 5K service on Indian Springfield, and we're in May 2024. Uh, they did volunteer a $50 um, discount uh, coupon that Indian's offering, which is, is interesting because the last thing I got in a big discussion with them about was the coupons and how they read and I, I couldn't find a, a $50 service coupon on the website and in my searches so it was nice of them to volunteer it um, so it was $413 before the $50 coupon which took it to 363 it looked like they charged me a little bit more for the oil kit than you can actually buy it from on Indian's website but not by much and I don't know if they raised their labor rate. I'm going to have to go back and look at some of my other receipts. Uh, they charged me 280 which they said was based on a flat fee um, of two hours. And then $2 oil disposal fee and $10 shop supplies, uh, which is uh, always annoying to me. So anyhow, that's what it came up to was 363 after the coupon. And so the other thing is I had a list of uh, things I'd made for myself and I ended up just giving it to them uh, when I got there. Uh, just of a few things, some of which we've covered in the videos. Um, one of the one of you guys here in the comments had said that uh, you thought I might have a leaky fuel injector. And, um, and I, I mentioned that it wasn't starting up consistently, which I now think was the battery. And that sometimes I can smell gas. And um, they wrote on here, uh, the mechanic wrote hand notes on each of these, that uh, the fuel injectors are not leaking, the gas cap does not seal well. Replace with original cap. Now that is the original cap, I just have a little decorative thing on top of it. So after I asked them, they said that they would look into it, and they're not sure if it would be the whole cap or just the seal. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I did not mention this in the video, but you guys may recall I had the cylinder deactivation light kept coming on at times when it shouldn't. It was coming on in fourth and fifth gear when uh, downshifting and upshifting. Uh, it was coming on in cold weather. It's real. It's only supposed to come on in certain temperatures, warmer temperatures, and only like in first gear or neutral to first gear, not not moving. Uh, he wrote on here, this is a common issue across all Indians with cylinder deactivation. I recommend turning it off. And in person, was pretty much just told, yeah, it doesn't work right. Not exactly the quality you would hope for from Indian if they're aware of that. It works correctly on my Super Chief Limited. I got no problem with it on there. Um, I had made a video about a high-pitched noise coming from my bike, and I would have my ear down, and some people had said that it sounded... So it's pressure from the gas cap 
And if you release it, the sound goes away. Well, it didn't in my case. And, uh, apparently I have a faulty gas cap anyway, but, uh, I, I mentioned here that I had this high, uh, pitch noise. Sounds like it's from the front, right? Um, you know, is there anything to it? They wrote that the fuel pump priming and running is the only thing I hear when we did a test. So I don't know. That's it. Uh, the next thing I mentioned to them was I had replaced the battery because it wasn't starting consistently and the connections look solid and that I did keep it on a battery tender. And uh, I just was curious how that would have been handled had I brought it in. They did say that it would have probably be covered under warranty and that being that I've already done it myself, uh, I should get in contact with Polaris customer service for a resolution directly. And he also noted batteries need to be charged by the starter. Not good to leave them plugged in a lot. And then the last issue was this squealing noise or rubbing feeling I get in the handlebars. I can feel it in the handlebars and you can kind of hear it quickly. And I can't duplicate it. I don't know what causes that noise. And um, to this, he wrote he could not replicate the issue, but that your front WSS is being ground down and should be replaced. And I had to clarify and talk to him, make sure I understood what WSS was and its wheeled speed sensor. And I've since posted a uh, question on the Indian discussion forums and I'll, people have given me a lot of good info. Um, I'm mad at myself that I didn't ask the guy what exactly was rubbing it. I asked him, shouldn't that be covered under the warranty? He said, he'll look into it and they'll get back to me. And uh, somebody in the discussion forums made the great point that if they don't figure out what's rubbing it, it's going to keep happening. Unless they fix it, they can't just replace it. And uh, pretty much people were telling me online that in response to my question, pretty much no nothing should be rubbing it unless uh, some shims were not put in. And to answer some questions people ask me, I've never had the tire off. I've never had the brake calipers uh, off. Uh, no reason. Um, I haven't replaced the tires. They, they, they were fine on the tread. I, uh, I can't rule out what the prior owner did. But I just sizing up him and the situation, I don't think he replaced anything on the front. I, he, he did a dealer 500 mile service, the break in service, and nothing was noted there um, from what I could tell. So uh, they're supposedly looking into the gas cap and this uh, wheel speed sensor. And I'm going to call them tomorrow um, to talk more about what exactly was rubbing. And how, because I didn't think anything should be rubbing the wheel speed sensor, but I really, you know, was at a deficit of knowledge on this because I didn't go in knowing that was going to be an issue. I didn't research it in advance so I could sound like I knew what the hell I was talking about. And so on the back end, I've, I've been researching and the discussion forums have been tremendously helpful. Uh, so many people take their time and provide uh, responses. So I've saved all of them on my desktop. And I'm going to give them a call tomorrow and see if we can get somewhere on this uh, so that I can understand it. And uh, otherwise, the bike ran pretty good. They did adjust the clutch back to spec. And, uh, and I'm working on some of those uh, drills. And um, that's about it. I just thought you guys might find some of this curious as we're all comparing notes and having work done. And you might be having some of the same issues. Uh, so, all right. That's it. I'll see you on the road.